Hello, I'm Alexis and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. These babies, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, no. How? He just untied my belt. I wanted to take this opportunity to say hello and start this vlog because I actually had to get dressed up and go into the office today. This only happens like a few times a year, maybe like two times a year when somebody important comes in. So my boss was in town today. Wow, that lighting's terrible. Let's turn around. Um, so my boss was in town today, so I had to work half the day in the office. Not had to, but you know, I agreed to, to hang out with him talk to him in person so just got home going to continue working now that I'm home but wanted to show you my outfit because I feel really cute and dressed up today we're playing professional Barbie today got my nice little work pants on that are so stretchy and comfortable and feel like leggings and my boots and a sweater because it was cold this morning and then when I left for the day it was like 50 degrees and I'm sweating on my drive home. Why? I, uh, I guess I can give you a reading update. Okay. We're back in my normal spot, in my desk. Ignore the mess behind me. That's my partner's gaming desk that doesn't see much gaming. It's really just a place for his laundry. Welcome to another weekly vlog. If you watched last week's, you know that I am currently making my way through An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. I am... 207 pages in and I am loving it so so much made it to the vampire part of the story We're getting gay shit. It's incredible. It's like the perfect gothic dark academia Toxic romance not even like toxic romance like tortured romance. I love it. I love it so much I really just need to sit down and finish it because Every time I'm reading it, I'm devouring it and I don't want to put it down, but I've just been so busy that I'm not picking it up. So I have less than 100 pages. No, I have like 150 pages. I can definitely finish that today. Hmm. I will try to make time for it. Um, it's Tuesday, so Tuesday's a gym day. I already uploaded my YouTube video for the day though, so I don't have to spend time editing. I might edit last week's vlog, the one that would be up by now. Um, because yeah, I'm trying to edit a little bit every day and that way I don't have to spend hours editing before I post a video. That is the goal, to just get more in the routine of editing all the time. Other than that, I did start an audiobook. This is my physical book, and I like to have an audiobook going, which is The Art Thief by Michael Finkel. This one's wild. Um, I wanna say I'm like 25, 30% of the way in, and it's really, really short. So, if I actually spend any time listening to it, I could probably finish it very fast, but I didn't feel like it yesterday. I listened to music and then today I had to go into the office and well, I could have listened to my book while I was working. I just kind of wanted to like talk with my coworkers that I never get to see in person because we all work remotely. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, I will maybe listen to this a little bit at the gym. This is about an art thief who took over $2 billion worth of artwork over his lifetime. He was just stealing from art museums and finally he got caught and it's just so wild. Can't believe I've never heard of this man before then and like he started stealing in 1995. Like that's not that long ago. Like I mean it's the year I was born so like it is 28 years ago but in the scheme of things like I definitely thought this was going to be in like I don't know like the 1800s like back before things were really like guarded the way that they are now and even I mean in the 90s probably not as high tech as it is now obviously they probably didn't have like security cameras the way we do this has been so cool it's kind of like listening to a true crime podcast it's going through like where he started talking about the different pieces that he stole he actually worked as a security guard at an art museum for like a really really short amount of time um, so he kind of just had like insider knowledge of like, this is the shifts the guards take. This is the rounds they do. So like, you know, here's a good time to steal. And he had his girlfriend working with him as the lookout. So she would be like watching the door and then he would like 
what did he what does he use like a pocket knife or something or a screwdriver he like literally only uses one tiny little tool and like just gets away with all this stuff and the craziest part he doesn't even sell the artwork like this guy is a loser like <laughs> So number one, he's a criminal, right? Because he's stealing art. But number two, he's not even selling it. This guy lives in his mother's attic, doesn't have a job, with his girlfriend who's a nurse who's supporting him, and he has billions of dollars worth of artwork in his attic apartment, doesn't sell it, doesn't contribute to this relationship at all, literally just steals artwork for a living, just to decorate his house with. Like, he keeps saying, like, I'm not in it for the money. Like, I'm not really a real thief because I'm doing it because I appreciate art so much. Like, I'm loving the book, but the the guy, the, um, I didn't even tell you what the guy's name is. Um, Stefan Breitweiser? He's a loser. <laughs> like, I can't believe. Like, and, and the girlfriend, too. Like, it's one thing to like do this if you were getting something out of it but like what is she getting out of this so yeah those are the plans for the week um i don't know what else i want to read after i am just going to focus on these and then we will pick a book together when i finish them but i've got to get back to work um, and yeah i will talk to you in a little bit for the weird angle I'm using my pillow as a tripod right now but I just finished an education in malice hello po what's up you say hi come here come here okay so we just finished <laughs> no he licked it you licked it you can't I'm still trying to collect my thoughts at the ending. Overall, really, really loved the first three-fourths of the book. I really loved the sapphic relationship in it. Um, I liked the vampire aspect, the vampire house party scene. That was good. And yeah, I liked the um, kind of really, really dramatic obsession that the girls had over each other. It wasn't just like, I like you. It's like, I would die for you. You are the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, and just gorgeous writing, of course, because it's S.T. Gibson. I guess my only complaint is I really didn't like the teacher character, um, Ms. De La Fontaine. Um, she was their poetry professor. Her and Carmilla had a weird relationship and it just, and, and there was a warning in the front of the book for this uneven power dynamics, inappropriate relationships between a professor and a student. So like we were, we were warned of this going in. Um, I just really didn't like it. And like, you know, it was kind of present throughout the whole book. I thought maybe things would change. So I'm not really happy with that. And then the whole B plot, the kind of, um, conflict that arises in this book that the main characters have to figure out that seemed a little too easy um, it also felt like it was just forgotten for a big chunk of the book it like something happened in like the beginning ish um, the first 200 pages and then 
we forgot about it until the very end and then suddenly it was an issue again. So even with those few little complaints I have, I think I'm still gonna give it a five star because I'm just obsessed with Laura and Carmilla. Like, they might be one of my favorite bookish couples I've read in a very long time. Like, Esty Gibson knows how to write women because I had a crush on Carmilla just as much as Laura did. It did end with sort of an open ending where I could see there being a sequel. So I'd be very, very interested to pick that up if S.T. Gibson decides to write one. And there's just so much to explore. This one did have one of the vampires from A Dowry in Blood make like a guest appearance. So yes, if you liked A Dowry of Blood, definitely check this one out. I love it so much. Okay, I guess we can go pick our next read. It is, what time is it? It's 10.41, so it's almost bedtime, but I did take a like 30 minute nap earlier, so I'll probably read a little bit more before bed. Here are our options of what to start next. And I'm thinking, I want to go with Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. This is the Literally Dead book club pick for the month and a library book that I think is due back on Saturday. I will try to renew it, but just in case there is a hold on it. Yes, Po, nobody wants to hear your crinkling right now. But yeah, in case there's a hold on it, should probably start this one. And I really like Jesse Q. Sutanto's other book, Dial A for Auntie. So if it's anything like that, I'm thinking I'll be able to fly right through this. I'm expecting a really fun, wild time. Um, her writing is hilarious, and I'm sure Vera Wong will be the same as all the aunties. So now we just have to pick a bookmark to go with the book. Happy Friday. We just got back from dinner. We went out to eat at one of our favorite vegan places. I ended up getting this vegan chicken sandwich and Dan got a vegan grilled cheese. It was delicious. One of our favorite places for a reason. So now I am very, very full and sleepy, but there are some things to do and talk about. First up, Vera Wong. When I last spoke to you, I was just starting this and Bless you. And I have made it to the 50% mark. I am loving it so much. Um, it's exactly as we thought it would be. I love Jesse Q. Sutanto's writing. It's hilarious. It's heartfelt. Mystery involved. So there's intrigue. I, I love it. I am flying through it, obviously, and hoping to finish it tonight. I decided a goal for this weekend of mine is going to be to get through my library books. I currently have three checked out. This is one of three. So hoping to finish this one today. Um, I do have kind of a busy Saturday, so it's a little ambitious to say I'm going to read two more books this weekend. But, you know, we'll see what we can do. I am nothing if not over ambitious when it comes to reading. But anyways, I should probably tell you what this one is about. So we have Vera Wong. She is the owner of Vera Wang's world famous tea shop. And she is just so sassy. I love her so much. One day she walks downstairs to open the tea shop and there's a dead body on the floor of her tea shop. And so she is convinced this had to be a murder. But the cops are all saying, no, it was an allergic reaction, um, no foul play, case closed. And Vera is convinced that she is going to prove this was a murder and find the murderer. And she is just so sassy. She is definitely one of my favorite characters I've read so far this year. Um, and then this book is really just like found family. 
If you are a fan of found family books, you are going to love this one. Um, I was tearing up earlier. I will insert a clip here. I'm 55% of the way into Vera Wong and I'm like tearing up. It is just so sweet. I don't know if I'm like extra emotional right now. Um, I'm just so happy. <laughs> Vera is just like collecting this little family. It's definitely got the found family trope and I love that so much and she's just so supportive of everybody. They're just really growing to love each other and it's just so sweet. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep reading because I love it so much. I was tearing up while listening to the audiobook earlier because I am just loving it so much. I love these characters. Um, the growth that these characters are having. I was actually a little surprised when I started it. I thought the only point of view we'd, we would be getting was Vera's, but we actually switched between different points of view. It's, um, honestly, it's Vera and all of her murder suspects. So we have Vera, the tea shop owner who found the body. We are also following Julia, who is the wife of the dead guy. We are following Ricky, who we don't know how he's connected to the dead guy, but Vera is suspicious of him. Um, we have Sana, another one. We don't know how she's connected, but suspicious. And then we have Oliver, who is the dead guy's brother. So we are getting chapters from all of these people's perspectives, and they're all finally coming together to reveal to us how they are all connected to this man. Um, and it's just really, really funny. After the death happens, uh, it was so sweet. So Vera's Tea Shop, despite the name being world famous, it is not very busy at all. So bad for her. She literally has one customer. He comes every day. She doesn't even charge him for the tea. And, um, and then besides that, she's just a lonely woman. She, she is really, really passionate about tea and taking care of people. And she just doesn't have customers coming into her tea shop and then she does have a son who she texts and um honestly bothers every day like I do get his side that if I had my mother texting me things the way she is like um stop sleeping the day away you're lazy I get it I would be annoyed but just reading it from Vera's perspective that she means nothing but well she just loves her son so much and really wants the best for him She's just lonely and then as soon as the murder happens all of these people start showing up to the tea shop to kind of investigate and she's just so excited to have customers, to have murder suspects, to just have people to talk to and I just... I cannot stop saying how much I love her. She is such a sweetheart and she is just like... She makes everybody's life that she touches better. The goal is to finish this one tonight. Um, I'm really intrigued. I really don't know who the killer could be. Like, I honestly can't see it being any of the characters we know. I think this is going to be like a wild plot twist. It's going to be somebody we never suspected. It is 7 o'clock right now, so my goal is to edit for an hour. I'm very close to being done editing a vlog that I want to go up tomorrow. So we're going to do that 8 o'clock drag race it's friday as usual and then once drag race is over i will be sitting down to finish vera wong Vera Wong and I'm trying to think of what I want to rate it. I'm trying to be like critical but honestly it was so cute and heartwarming. I think I have to go with five stars. Like if a book can make me like cry happy tears it's gotta be five stars right? Um, so yeah I love this one so much. I liked it more than Dial A for Aunties um, a lot. It, it just had the found family trope, and that's one of my favorite tropes ever. And just the way everybody came together to support Vera and gave her the family that she wanted, and, and, and she was just lonely without everyone, and now she has people who appreciate her, and, and the twist at the end, it was well done. I liked how everything wrapped up. 
think I mentioned this in my March TBR, but if you're a fan of El Casamano and the Finlay Donovan series, I really recommend you check this one out. It's another one that like Vera just gets herself into these wacky situations. Crime is involved and somehow she gets away with it because she's just such a lovable character. And it just really had the humor the way that um, the way that the Finlay Donovan books have. So if you are looking for more books like that, definitely check out Jesse Q. Sutanto. And that's not to say Dial A for Antis was bad. I liked that one a lot too, um, which is why I'm surprised that I like this one more. Okay, so that's one library book done. Um, I think tonight, uh, it's late, it's already midnight. I am just staying up a little bit longer to wait for my vlog to process and upload and while that's working i'm probably going to get a start on editing this vlog that we're currently in so yeah 30 more minutes of that and then i'll get into bed and i think i want to start once upon a broken heart we read like two pages and fall asleep but that'll be the priority for tomorrow is to finish it maybe every time i say that in a vlog i like take a week to read something so maybe i should just stop talking um but yeah you know what i think i have the audiobook for that so that will help i do have the audiobook so i do have some things i have to do tomorrow so at least i can listen to them i guess i will talk to you tomorrow so much for editing Alexis because I'm a little tipsy. I just came from a Bandits lacrosse game. Insert clip here. It was very, very fun. I went with my friends. Um, I ate my weight in nachos and I had a $20 beer. And that was after pre-gaming a little bit at home. So on top of sleeping like absolute garbage last night, I'm feeling good. Yeah, the point of me talking to you today, right now, is, okay, we need to calm down a little bit. We're being a little too silly. I want to talk to you about this book. I started this last night. I actually, okay, I'm remembering. I told you I was going to start this last night, but I only thought I would read, like, a few pages because... It was already like midnight or 1 a.m. Yeah, I ended up staying up until 2 a.m. reading this. And it's good. It's just not, you know, I'm just not obsessed with it. Um, but like it was intriguing enough to make me read for an hour instead of going to sleep. And then I did make it to 50% today. I've been reading it in tandem with the audio while I was cleaning up around the house. I did some reading sprints today. So I got to page 184, chapter 28, and things are happening. I'm still just not obsessed. Like, it's just, it's a good book. It's just, I don't, I don't get what the girlies are obsessed with yet. You know, maybe the ending will change my mind. I'm here to tell you what this book is about. We have our main girl, Evangeline. She is in love with this man named Luke. And she thinks they're going to live happily ever after together until she sees the notice that Luke is actually marrying her stepsister. Instead of Evangeline absolutely ripping this guy to shreds, she goes and consults the fates. And you can make a deal with the fates if you're willing to pay their price. Um, they are... They seem like tricksters. They are definitely not to be trusted. Like, the deal you make is not the deal you're going to get. 
So Evangeline goes to make a deal with the Prince of Hearts, also known as Jax, and just right away you can tell something is up. So he agrees that he is going to stop the wedding between her sister Marisol. God, I've been I've been reading this book all day. I know the characters. He makes a deal with Evangeline that he will stop the marriage between Marisol, her sister, and Luke in exchange for three kisses from Evangeline. And those aren't kisses to him. Evangeline doesn't have to kiss Jack for these, but she has to kiss whoever Jax tells her to. So Evangeline agrees and just right away she knows she makes a mistake. She goes to the wedding. Things are not what she agreed to and just chaos goes from there. So far I do like Jax's character a lot. Um, he's probably my favorite. Like I don't know. I just have a thing for like trickster bad boys. Like I just, I know something's up his sleeve. I know him and Evangeline are going to end up together in the end, or at least I'm delusional and hoping that they do. Um, but yeah, it's giving me like Addie LaRue vibes. Like Evangeline is Addie and Jax is the demon she made a deal with, which I actually think his name was Luke. So that's funny, the like crossover there. But like, how are you going to make this deal with this like trickster fate with this guy that is going to go marry your stepsister. Like, he clearly doesn't care about you. Like, move on. Live your life. Get a better guy. Um, so, yeah. At the 50% mark, Evangeline is kind of going off on her own adventure. She goes to... I honestly can't remember what they call it in the book, but in my head, it's the North Pole. Um, but, like, uh, but, like, a magical North Pole. So, there is... <laughs> there is a really beautiful... Stunning illustration. Okay, yeah, welcome to the Magnificent North. Like, tell me that isn't the North Pole. You know, you, you get what I'm saying? So there's like this big party going on. The prince is trying to find a wife and Jax is there causing chaos, um, making Evangeline give her kisses that she has agreed to. So yeah, we're making good progress. I'm going to try to read a little bit more. That's my plan for tonight. Um, as always, Sunday mornings are our coffee shop date morning. So we will be going to get coffee. I will be bringing this with me. And hopefully finishing it early tomorrow. Because I have at least one more book I want to finish this weekend. <laughs> Happy Sunday. We are starting our painting. Hi Milo, you wanna be part of the video? Okay, so we are doing a paint by numbers of this little guy, um, except I don't like the colors they gave me. So as you saw, I picked out some colors and I'm going to try and use this reference photo of a goldfinch. So yeah, we're gonna try and make a little goldfinch out of this guy. I am not a painter. Eva, quiet. Poe is menacing the cat. I am not a painter at all. I just have all of this stuff because I really like arts and crafts. Um, so we're going to do our best. But like how much can you mess up a paint by number, right? Like I have, it's basically coloring with paint. We have all our lines already on the wooden board. And I think he's going to be cute. So... Also, bookish, while I am painting, I'm going to be listening to the audiobook of The Art Thief. Um, because, you know, art, art, I think that'll be fun. Um, it's a very short audiobook, and I'm already like halfway through, so I should be able to finish it while I'm painting. I don't really know how long it's going to take me to paint this. But I'm only 31% into the audiobook. Okay, I thought I was farther. Let's see. We have about four hours left of the audiobook, but I listen on two times speed. So two hours to paint? 
probably even be done with the painting before then. Let's do this thing. It has been just over two hours. I was exactly right that I finished that book in two hours. And here is the progress we have so far on the painting. Sorry about the, there we go, the window. It just, um, it's very sunny today behind me. So it's good for when I'm working on the painting, but not trying to film. So um, yeah, this is gonna take me longer than I thought. I'm gonna keep working on it because I'm having fun. Um, but I did finish The Art Thief, I liked it. I usually don't rate nonfiction because I usually read a lot of memoirs and it just feels weird to rate somebody's, you know, life and experiences. But with this one, because it really was like, it was a biography, but not written by the guy who was the art thief, you know, such as biographies are usually written by other people or they would be an autobiography. Um, here, what if I turn? Is this better? That's a little better. But now Poe thinks that the camera is a game. The Art Thief. It was really, really well researched. Um, the author really knew what he was talking about. And we find out at the end that he did actually like, this is a firsthand recounting from Stefan Breitweiser like he met up with him you know he asked him like tell me everything and this is basically the confessions of how he did it how he got away with it how he got caught everything yes hi why so just really really great story I stand by what I said the art thief Breitweiser big loser like and the way he got caught too like just use your brain and of course his girlfriend the whole time like she told him not to take art from that museum that caught him and what happens um so yeah I liked it a lot it was really cool learning something that I had never heard of before um and it was the audiobook was like listening to a true crime podcast so if you are at all a fan of true crime podcasts or art history um crime stories i don't know it was just really fun it was it was cool we're moving up here so that the dogs can't try to bite the camera anymore um yeah you guys look at you why are you smiling at me what do you want what are you doing okay so the plan now is to keep painting work on the bird. I would really like to finish this today. I think it's doable. We've got the Once Upon a Broken Heart audiobook to listen to. We did go on our coffee shop date this morning, but we invited some friends and well, we told them to bring books because we would be reading. Um, reading did not get done. We were too busy talking. I read exactly one chapter, so I think I'm on chapter 32 maybe um so yeah i'm gonna keep listening to that i would really like to finish that today and get another book done in this vlog i think it's possible i just you know need to actually do it but i don't have anything else planned so i guess i will talk to you when my painting's done and or if i have any more thoughts on once upon a broken heart the painting is almost done look at how cute he is I'll give you the final look 
when I'm completely done, um, but reading update, I switched over to the audio for Once Upon a Broken Heart, and I was about 50% of the way through. Oh, I'm 82% of the way through, and I'm in it more. I'm starting to understand why the girlies like this. Um, is it because vampires were introduced to the story? Maybe, probably, but um, I'm liking it more. I like where like the mystery is going, trying to find out why so many curses have been happening. Yeah, I mean, and we're getting more Jax, and I, you know, Jax is my favorite character so far. But I feel like even Evangeline is like, she's getting better. I like her more than when we started. She's just becoming more of a person that's not just obsessed with men. give you my final thoughts on Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I did finish this while working on my painting. I It's drying right now so I will insert a clip now of me showing you hanging it on my gallery wall that I have just started putting together. I really like how it's looking so far and I like this little bird guy as a new addition. Back to the book. Um, so ending surprised me. I I liked it a lot more towards the ending. Um, final rating, I decided to go with four stars. It got better. It sort of left off on a cliffhanger and left me really wanting to pick up the second one. So I have to make my April TBR soon. Maybe, maybe it will make its way on there. I mean, that's a good sign, right? It was good enough that I want to continue the series. I liked how more got revealed in the end, and it did remind me a lot of the first Throne of Glass book. And maybe it's just like the castle with the secret passageway and getting involved with a prince. And I just feel like Evangeline has a lot to discover about herself. I don't think that she is 100% human. I don't know what she is, but there's something that Stephanie has not told us yet. I am intrigued to keep going with the series. I want to know what happens to her and Jax. I am still rooting for them to be together. I'm happy with this one. I'm happy I finally picked it up. So that being said, I have all of my books I finished this week. Let's put them in order. All of my books I finished this week in order and I just tallied up and entered my Realmathon points. So I thought I would give you the rundown of everything. Starting out with my first read of the week, An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This one, of course, was five stars. My entire personality. I, I love this one. I haven't stopped thinking about it. All right, this one, I ended up getting 38 positive points for Realm of Blood. This one counted for five prompts. This was a five-star read, so get an A+. Plus. I also paid for it, which is Bribe a Teacher. The author writes under a pseudonym, Switch Your Grade. It was a required read because it's on my TBR. I count that as required to read. Um, plus three. 
and then it was new to my TBR since it just came out this year, and that's plus two points. And then I got bonus points for this one, plus 10 for the page count because it was between 201 and 400 pages, and then plus 10 for the school setting. Next up, we have Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. This one was also five stars and was the Literally Dead book club pick for March. Um, this one we got a total of 36 positive points for Team Realm of Blood. This one I read in multiple formats. There was an even number of letters in the title. It was a popcorn read. I consider Cozy Mysteries popcorn reads. Like I said, it was a five star read, so that counted for points. And then I had plus 10 points for the page count and plus 10 points for my realm item on the cover, which is a person. After that, I finished The Art Thief by Michael Finkel. This one, also five stars, and we got a total of 28 positive points. It was five points for a five-star read and three points for a required read because it is also on my March TBR. I had plus 10 points for the page count and plus 10 points for an item, which is person on the cover for my realm. And finally, the last book we finished this week once Upon a Broken Heart, we got 31 positive points for Realm of Blood, two for reading it in multiple formats. I read it with my eyes while listening to the audiobook. There's an even number of letters in the title. I consider romanticy popcorn reads. Um, again, I just read them for fun. And then again, required read because it was on my TBR for the month, and I got 20 points for the page count because it was between 401 and 600 pages and then no bonus points for the realm color or item or a school setting so 31 total points okay so i think i had an incredible reading week three five stars and one four star a new romanticy series i want to keep up with and yeah i hope you had a great week too um let's see you can tell me what is the best book you read this month so far in the comments or you can leave me the broken heart emoji for once upon a broken heart as always thank you so much for watching i hope you read a good book today and i will see you again soon with my next romathon vlog bye